Today we're looking at the Acaso Brave 4 Elite. Is it really the budget action camera of 2023? Well, this is going to be my full review. By the way, if you're looking for a very short video, this is not it. So this is going to be a longer video, but I'm going to go through a lot of aspects of the Acaso Brave 4 Elite. And to let you know, is it actually worth it or not? Because it comes in at $189. And at $189, is it actually worth it? Because there's some other offerings out there that may be worthwhile to look at. But then again, I'll touch on that a little bit later on. So let's first talk about this action camera. And by the way, quick little disclaimer. Yes, Acaso did send me this action camera for a review. They did not pay me for this video. They didn't tell me what to say. And they don't get to see this video before it's released. But this video does have a sponsor and that is Artless. And we'll talk about them a little bit later. It is all waterproof. So it's waterproof down to 33 feet, just as it is right now. And if you look at it, the build quality is nice. It's got dual screens on it. So you've got a two inch touch screen on the back, quarter 20 on the bottom, power button here on the side, shutter button, and then a menu button or a mode button. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. And on this side, you've got the speaker and you've got this little magnetic port. Now the magnetic port is something that I'll touch on a little bit later too, because this comes with a cable for charging and for data transfer. So for charging, this has a magnet on it. So as you see here, it just clips right on and it's held on pretty securely. You know, it is kind of a unique design when you think about, you know, having a magnetic charger that just clips right onto it. Some people ask, hey, what is this right here at the bottom? Well, that's actually two LED lights. So if you want to light your scene, and yes, I will test that here in just a little bit to let you see what that looks like. But all in all, the build quality is very nice on this. Acaso, you know, they were at a point to where they were really making a lot of headway with their action cameras as far as for the budget segment. And SJ Cam used to be the king of budget action cameras, but now Acaso had like really stepped up their game. The V50X, the V50 Pro, the V50, uh, oh, I can't remember. I'll put it down here at the bottom of the screen. Those are really good action cameras considering the fact that they gave you real 4K the 1080p wasn't the greatest in the world, but then again, you know, everybody wants 4K. Does this do 4K? Yes, it does. Now, it is rumored to have the iCatch uh, V39 chipset, which is capable of 4K 30 and 4K 60, which this camera boasts that it can do 4K 30 and 4K 60. But we'll talk about the 4K in just a little bit. Next up, let's talk about another feature of this little action camera. If you notice here on the bottom, there is no battery drawer to worry about sliding open and sliding out because it has a built-in 1650 milliamp per hour battery. I know a couple of people on my previous video where I did the little first look, they, a lot of people commented on what is the battery life like for this Brave 4 Elite. So in my testing, 4K 60 got 50 minutes of record time. 4K 30 got an hour and 10 minutes of record time. Kind of keep that in mind. I didn't test record time at 1080p or 2.7K because this is built as a 4K action camera. So that's with image stabilization on as well. It does have image stabilization with this. I could not get any information from Acaso. My rep did not want to tell me anything about this. Had to do some digging around on what the possible chipset was for this action camera. Nothing regarding the uh, image sensor on it. So, you know, there, Michael from Tech for All, he may come across some information and uh, when he does his review of the Acaso Brave 4 Elite. As of the time of recording this video, I couldn't find out any other information about this action camera. Now, another feature that this action camera has is 64 gigabytes of built-in memory. So a lot of people say, well, that's great. Now I don't need an SD card. That is great. So you don't need an SD card. You don't have to worry about popping open a door, it flopping out, shooting across the room, because trust me, it's happened to me many, many a times where a little micro SD card, I went to push it in and it just shot off across the room and I had to go looking for it. So having built-in storage, that's another great feature. And you can access that with this magnetic data cable, which doubles as charging cable and also data cable. 
And this camera also has the capability of being able to be used as a web camera. Although I did not test it as a web camera, I don't have any inclination to test it as a web camera because this camera's low light performance is not all that great. So let's turn on the camera just so you can see. The menu is pretty responsive. The user interface, as you can see the touch screen, very nice and responsive on it. Now this is with the rear screen on. So if I want to turn on the front screen for vlogging, I'll hold down that M mode button and then it switches over. Now the front screen is on and the back screen is off. So if you hold down the mode button again, it transfers back to the rear screen. So like I said, the user interface and the touch screen is very, very nice on this. It does have the ability to where you can digitally zoom in, but you can't do that while you're recording. You have to do that before you record. Now this camera also boasts the ability to be able to take 20 megapixel photos. And well, since we're talking about it, let's show that now. So at this point, just real quick, pause the video, comment down below, and tell me what do you think about the photos that this camera took? Okay, all right. So now you can unpause and we'll get back to the video. Like I said, this camera says that it does 4K. I wanna to touch on a 1080p real quick. The 1080p is not the resolution that you wanna use this camera in, and neither really is the 2.7K in my opinion. It's a little bit on the muddy side. 720 in slow motion at 240 frames per second is really great, but then again, the 720 is 720 and it does not look good. If the 1080p looked bad on this, the 720 is even worse. 4K is not bad on this. The image quality that comes out of the camera is a little bit, in my opinion, oversaturated. If you look at some of the examples of the background where I'm in focus, and by the way, I've got, I'm six foot six, so I've got a pretty good long reach. And when I hold the camera out this far, it is still very tight. And you would assume that the tightness of the field of view is because of the image stabilization, because with a lot of action cameras, they'll get better image stabilization because they're cropping in more onto the image. Kind of like a lot of the larger cameras, uh, mirrorless cameras, they do that, they crop in on the image so that they've got more wiggle room for stabilization. In this case, it's a little bit too tight. So if you're gonna use this as a vlogging camera per se, to me, it's not worthy of a vlogging camera just because the angle is just a little bit too tight. Unless you stick it on a selfie pole and you hold it out even a little bit further, then maybe you can use it as one. But the 4K60, while it is 4K, and yes, the dimensions are correct and the pixel count is correct, there's difference in 4K. So what I mean by that is some 4K is better than other 4K. So just like with a mirrorless camera, you can have a 4K camera that has tons of rolling shutter, and then you have one that handles the rolling shutter very well. When it comes to image quality of a 4K action camera, some 4K is very good, some 4K is this mediocre, and I think a lot of it has to do with the processing chip inside. Nothing against iCatch, and if iCatch, if you're watching, I apologize, but then again, squeeze a little bit more image quality out of this. Now, this is still the initial firmware that came with the camera. So maybe Acaso will update the firmware for this so that we can get a little bit better image quality out of it. If they do a major update that it addresses the stabilization and addresses the image quality, I will do another video of this. But speaking of video, so at the beginning of this video, I talked about $189. Is this really worth it as a budget action camera? Because $189, when you think about it, that's almost $200. Now we're starting to get out of a budget range. To me, a budget range is going to be $80 to like the 120s. To me, that's a good price to be at for a budget action camera. And yes, it may not have the best stabilization in the world and 
you know, you kind of get what you pay for. But at $189, now I have to start comparing it to like the SJ8 Pro or even the SJ10 Pro. And does this compete in that price category? What I want to do now, I want to show you some clips of the Acaso Bray 4 Elite versus the old GoPro Hero 7 Black in 4K. Now, the GoPro Hero 7 Black has a wider field of view. Image stabilization is on on both cameras, and they're both at 4K 30. So let's take a look at that now. So I figured now it's time to do a good comparison of the new Acaso Bray 4 Elite. And what camera should I compare it to? Well, I'm going to compare it to the GoPro Hero 7 Black. The reason being is that the Acaso Bray 4 Elite is being sold for $189. So it's on the upper end of a budget action camera. And you can still get the GoPro Hero 7 Black pretty inexpensively, probably around $100 to $150 maximum in a one that's in a really good used condition. So quick little audio test on the Acaso Bray 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now the GoPro Hero 7 Black, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's just see what image quality and stabilization looks like. The GoPro is 4K 30 frames per second. The Acaso is 4K 30 frames per second. It's a little bit overcast. It was sunnier this morning and I should have got out, but I had a project I had to finish up. But it's a little overcast, but that'll give us a little idea of dynamic range going into a shadowed area underneath this magnolia tree just to see how does it look and you have to remember now when it comes to stabilization the gopro hero 7 is many 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 generations old now considering that the gopro hero 11 is out and the gopro hero 12 will be out in a couple of months so does the old gopro hero 7 does it still have better stabilization than what the new Acaso Bray 4 Elite does? And you know what, just for giggles, I'm going to stick it on my one bot bike just to see what stabilization is between these two. So kind of interesting results there. Yes, this one has more saturation. So it does look a little bit more saturated, more vibrant. But then again, when you really just look at the image quality and the 4K versus 4K, you can see that the old GoPro Hero 7 outperforms this. Now, a lot of people are like, well, okay, well, you can't get the GoPro Hero 7 new anymore. Well, you know, you can still get them on eBay in excellent condition used that is anywhere from like, I found it from $80 to like 90 something. There you go. You consider that and you do a firmware update if it hasn't been updated and you're good to go. You know, are you a content creator that makes videos for YouTube or for commercial projects and you're looking for good music for your videos? Artlist is where I get all of my videos from and it's definitely a company that I highly recommend, I've been with them for years now and I've never had any copyright issues on any of my projects or any of my videos for YouTube. With Artlist, you can choose between genre, mood, tempo, vocals for male, female vocals, and it's updated constantly. They've got tens of thousands of songs and you can also get sound effects, you can also get plugins, you can also get templates. It's just everything. And that's why they call it Artless Max now. So if you want to up your game without the fear of a copyright issue, and you want to know that you can download that song and it's yours to use forever, use my link in the description below to get an extra two months off 
Now back to the video. So you remember I talked about the LED lights? Well, let's take a look and see what the LED lights actually do with them off in a low light situation and then turning them on. Okay, low light situation with the Acaso Brave 4 Elite. 4K 30 frames per second. Let's go into a dark room just so we can see what it looks like with no fill light on the little LEDs. And now let's turn it on. And now this is with the LEDs on now, the little fill light that's in the menu system. So does this really make a difference? Does it help out? Let's turn around here and see, did it help out at all? So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the Acaso Brave 4 Elite, the way it is right now with this initial firmware. So first off, first pro, build quality. This thing is built very, very well. So second thing we're going to talk about is going to be the audio. It actually has pretty decent audio considering that it's a waterproof camera. Now remember, waterproof cameras, they have a membrane over the microphone to be able to keep water out. And usually a membrane will block some of the audio quality that you're hearing. It can be muffled at times with a lot of action cameras, a very low volume. This one is not bad. It's got decent audio quality. Another pro, it's got dual screens on it. So if you want to vlog, you can vlog with it. It's got two LED lights. Kind of cheesy in my opinion. It doesn't really help out, but it's something that they offer, but it does take away battery time. So kind of keep that in mind. Another pro about it is it does shoot real 4K. So it's not upscale 2K video. It's not interpolated. It is real 4K video, even up to 60 frames per second. Another pro a lot of people would say it's got built in 64 gigabytes of memory. So Having a camera that you don't have to worry about, did you stick an SD card into it? Did the SD card fail? It's got built-in storage. Nice little plus with this. Now let's talk about some of the cons of this. So you know, I just got finished talking about the 64 gigabytes of internal memory. Well, that could be a con too, because think about it. If the internal memory fails on this, that can be an issue because now the camera is a paperweight. You, or you're just gonna throw it away. So 64 gigabytes on this is a potential problem if it's not a good memory stick that's in here. And I don't know how they did it with uh, uh, the memory storage. If there's a little micro SD card built inside of it, I'm not gonna take this one apart, but that could be a problem in the future. Another thing is this cable. So this cable, I'm gonna consider a con because it is a proprietary cable. If you lose this cable and you know, I mean, we've all like misplaced cables somewhere, but with a lot of action cameras that have the either micro USB or the mini USB or the USB type C, if you lose one of those, most of us have additional cables of that connection. This one here being user specific for this action camera, could be an issue if you misplace it. Second off, the data transfer is very, very slow. And even though I set it as a pro with this action camera that it does real 4K, there's different qualities of 4K. And I mentioned that earlier. There's really good 4K. And I'm gonna say, you know, I have to use GoPro in this example, even though we're talking about an Acaso, but GoPro 4K is very, very good. The 4K image that comes out of here, it's just not as sharp as what, or as, I can't say sharp, because sharpening you can always add in post, but it's just not as detailed as what I'm used to 4K actually looking like. So, you know, if, if this camera was $99, I would say, okay, it's not a bad buy. You know, worst case scenario, the battery goes bad on this, and that's another con, I'll talk about that here in a second or the memory goes out on it, now you're kind of stuck like Chuck. Now the next comment we've got to talk about is going to be the battery. The battery on this, yes, 1650 milliamp hour battery. Fantastic. Yes, you can charge this and put this into a power bank and still continue recording. What happens if that battery and the action camera goes bad? you have no way of replacing the battery. And the EIS on this is not that good. I mean, as you saw, compared to the GoPro Hero 7, and we have to remember the GoPro Hero 7 is many iterations of the GoPro down the road because we that's a 7 that you saw in the video. 
Then we had the 8, which is a very good camera. The 9, audio issues, but even better. The 10, even better. The 11, which is fantastic. The old GoPro Hero 7 that you can get under $100 used still beats this action camera here for stabilization, for image quality, and for features. So it's something to keep in mind. I mean, it's not a bad bash against the Caso, and maybe that they will release a firmware update for this action camera. And if they do, I will definitely make another video updating to let you know, did it improve it? What the improvements were? Did it not improve it? Yeah, so that's the Acaso Brave 4 Elite. Is it worth it? You know, at $189, I'd have to say no. That's my review on the Acaso Brave 4 Elite action camera. Product link's in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. And if you have any questions, post them down in the comment section because I respond to all questions. And also, tell me what do you think about the GoPro Hero 7 versus the Acaso Brave 4 Elite? Did the 7 beat the snot out of this camera? I'm kind of curious to hear your opinions. Bye. Get a nice little sip of coffee. Ooh, I got a pee. I got a kidney stone. I've been drinking water like crazy. And I should probably start using my teleprompter. Let's wipe this thing down so it doesn't have a bunch of fingerprints on it.